everybody, it's the coach, and this is Madden 20 on EA Sports. On tap is what should be a pretty good matchup between the New York Jets and the Cleveland Browns. So with that, let's get up to First Energy Stadium in Cleveland. For the call, we welcome in our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Coach, thanks. CA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. This was the scene a few minutes ago. The dog pound in full roar as their Browns emerge from their tunnel. And they're ready to go as they get set to match up with the New York Jets. With you from the booth, Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis. Uh, CDR matchup here. A couple of teams last year that were really pretty similar, both under 500, both missed the playoffs, and they both think that they can turn things around in 2019. Yeah, how about 2018, though? A case of the haves and the have-nots. In 16 game seasons in the NFL, for the first time last year, no one finished 8-8. Eight and eight. Now, you know that in baseball, basketball, other sports, turnarounds can take three, four, five years. In football, could just be a few months. Cybert now to kick this thing away. This will be taken very short. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. So now here comes the Jet offense as they get ready to take over. Under center, it'll be the former Washington State Cougar at quarterback. It's Luke Falk. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll run here with a former Steeler. This is Le'Veon Bell. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. From the shotgun, here's Paul. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Two plays so far, a run and a pass attempt, and both have gone backwards. Probably not how they drew that up. Not at all. <laughs> Looking for a better play coming up on third. Hey, I don't think this hey, is the please. script they had in mind for their opening drive. This is third and long. It's Falk out of the gun. Griffin's got it, middle of the field. And he'll only get this to about the 35, well short of the line to gain. It's a gain of 11, but they're still well short. It's fourth down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. On fourth down, here's Lachlan Edwards to punt it. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. Baker and the Browns getting ready to go on the offensive side of the football here, and they are 1-2 and two through three weeks of the season, which not many people expected. A 20-13 loss in Week 3 to the Rams. And Baker was just 50%, Charles, 18-36, and Aaron Donald was chasing him around the field all night. You're right. Not many people expected it, especially fans of Cleveland. And then many observers looked at that team and said, they've really grown this roster. But did you not think it a little bit going into the season? What would happen if this team had to deal with like a 1-2, and 1-3 and three start? How would they handle things? We're hearing Baker Mayfield post-game talk about, hey, don't worry about it. Bump in the road. We'll figure it out. Now they have to show the rest of the world because the talent is there. But they had a difficult task dealing with the defending NFC champs, even on their home field. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. 
Now the third leading rusher among rookies last year. It's Nick Chubb. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. And he's got Roan. All right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. From the red zone now, Mayfield. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. The linebacker C.J. Mosley there in coverage. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. And quickly the starting 11 now for the New York defense. One of the best young safeties in the NFL, Jamal Adams. Keep... And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. 18-yard touchdown grab. And they are able to strike first here on their opening drive. Partner, remember that old film of Peyton Manning going through the route tree with his great receivers in Indianapolis? I think we're seeing the results of the same type of work here today. These guys know each other so well that they don't even have to call the play. They can just look each other and know the route that's going to be run, and usually the connection is perfect. Austin Seibert on for the extra point. It's up and through to make it 7 0 Browns. So the drive there, five plays, 80 yards. And it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. And a short kick, taking it about the 16. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. New York Jets offense returning to the field here. Last week they had a tough one where the Patriots lost it 30-14 to to drop to 0-3. And, you know, I kind of felt bad for Luke Falk, Charles. Yes, he gets his first NFL start, but it's against the Patriots. And the New York Jets offense, they only had 101 yards in this game. And that's not a major surprise, even though any NFL team you would expect a minimum of 200 yards. And the reason I say that is look at how well this Patriots defense has been playing, even dating back to last year's playoff and Super Bowl, they're giving up almost nothing. And 101 yards, those are the toughest 101 yards the Jets are going to get ever. That's the third lowest total in game in franchise history. Just six touchdowns, 0-13 on third down. Patriots defense was dominant in that game. And as you said, a tough way for Luke Falk to break into the NFL as a starting quarterback. And here's the starting crew defensively for Cleveland. When you're the number one overall pick in the NFL draft of 2017, puts a little extra scrutiny. Defensive end Miles Garrett is certainly used to it. In 2018, came into his own his second year in the league with 13 and a half sacks and really expects to increase that total in years to come. Falk looks to throw. And he finds his man Griffin. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It'll go as a gain of 11 and a Jets first down. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up a first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, usually gets it done. Catch here, left side, Thomas. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. And that was well defended. And as a cornerback, what you're taught when you see a wide receiver screen, either you get underneath the play before the blocking forms, or you're going to have to fight your way through it by getting through some blocking. That was a really nice play there. Set, AP Gators. Stop your body. 
On second down, it's Bell. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield after a gain of about four. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. Here's Lachlan Edwards now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Cleveland Browns coming back out here on offense, CD. Time to revisit that one and two start that we talked about earlier. It could very easily turn into one and four. You look at their next two games at Baltimore and then on the road for San Francisco. That's not easy. That is not easy by any stretch of the imagination. Baltimore off to a two and one start. You'll have to chase around Lamar Jackson in that offense. And the always tough Ravens defense will be there ready to play as well. And how about San Francisco? They've really jumped up their game because their defense carried their offense in their last win against Pittsburgh. Overcame five turnovers to win that game at home. So things won't be easy. They'll need guys like Miles Garrett to keep putting pressure on opposing quarterbacks because right now their secondary is really beat up. None of their starters played against the Rams. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. The safety, Jamal Adams, able to break that one up. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Now Mayfield being chased out left. He can run for it, and he will. And he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. Turns out to be a great idea to tuck that one. Good for 24 yards. We just saw a nice example of why teams often bring in baseball guys to teach quarterbacks how to slide in key situations. You want to protect your franchise guy. Make sure he doesn't get hurt. He did exactly that on that play. A perfect slide to avoid the big hit and pick up a first down. Set, 180. Hey, a lot of luck, a lot of luck. They'll run on first down. Failure. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Hey, one alert, one alert. One touch. On second down now, Hilliard, and he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. Regular, regular, regular. This is third and one, very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They'll try to throw here. Mayfield. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Landry. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. The play goes for 19 yards, gives him a new set of downs. You think back to last year when these two teams met in week three. That was a big one for the Browns franchise and for Baker Mayfield. Mayfield came in relief of Tyrod Taylor and broke the Browns' 19-game losing streak, beating fellow rookie Sam Darnold 21-17. And after the game, a lot of you will remember Browns management unlocking the, shall we call them, refreshment fridges that had been padlocked for so long until the Browns got that victory. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. On second and one, Mayfield. That is caught at the seven yard line. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. From eight yards out, and the Browns are going to tack on to their advantage. Well, they have to be loving this start to the first quarter. 
Well, the way that they're going, I mean, you're talking about two touchdown drives already. They feel very confident and feel like they have all the answers in this game. They're one point away from going up 14 to nothing. Maybe they press the advantage and go for two. Here's Seibert now to add the extra point. And it's good, and they have jumped out here to a quick 14-0 first quarter lead. So that drive consumes nine plays all told, and it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. And a short kick, taking it about the 16. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. The New York set to take the field. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does. And a lot of teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game. And typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early. Probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything. At least three points get that zero off the board. They run on first down, but it only produces a gain of two. It's second down now. 14-0 the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. The Jets with the football here to start the second quarter as they've got a second and eight forthcoming. 70, Indy. From just shy of midfield, Falk, and his throw is going to be incomplete. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play, and who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over in your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, we're not talking about our on-air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. It's been a good first half so far. They're up 14 to nothing. Points here, they could really put them in command before intermission. Yeah, and it's all well and good what they're seeing and how they're feeling right now. But this is the NFL. How many times have we watch 14 to nothing leads evaporate and quickly? So how, do we, how have we seen them combat it? Continue to run your offense, but don't back. Well, he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. Nick Chubb with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Browns are going to tack on to their advantage. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Cybert on for the PAT. And it is now 21 to nothing. I'm not sure if they drew that play up to score, but it scored indeed. One play on the ground and into the end zone for six. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Le'Veon Bell and the Jets ready to begin their next drive. They haven't been able to get him on track. They haven't been able to get this offense on track. No points so far. Maybe it's time to start doing a few different things. Throwing the ball a little bit. Maybe featuring hey, other people, touching it for a while. And then you've got a chance to come back to it when things have changed a little bit. They have to make an adjustment. There's still time for him here as we sit in the second quarter. Looks like he's going to get a couple here on this first down carry, and that'll make it second and eight. 
Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. They'll break the huddle. Come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. They'll run it with Bell. Try to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Some of these play calls, I think they're a little conservative, but you know me because it's easy to sit up in this booth, right, and make all the calls and, and think I'm going to be correct. But I would like to see them open things up because otherwise this defense just could gang up on the run and shut them down. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. His first catch of the game, good for 11 and a first down. On first and ten, fall. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. It was a solid check down there with pressure coming, wasn't it? It was because you're trying to go through your progression. And when you have that type of pressure in your face, it changes what you're doing and how fast you have to do your reads and able to come back and find him in open space. That's a really nice play. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Denzel Ward right there in coverage to get the hand in. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock down, but a way to bring up second down. Now Montgomery, he's got it on the draw. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. Partner, you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset? You want to get this running game going? I want to get this running game going. I'm going down there and saying, gentlemen, we have got to run the football. We've got to get it going right now. Yeah, to this point in the second quarter, it has been a struggle. Returnable here from the 38. Pass the 20. There he goes left side. And Touchdown, Cleveland. A 62-yard punt return. And the Browns are going to tack on to their advantage. Oh, the punt return. One of the most exciting plays in football. And it comes from guys of all shapes, sizes, and forms, doesn't it? You never know what you're going to get in a punt returner, but you get a guy, number one, who's fearless. Can make the first guy miss, and then once he's off to the races, I saw you standing up and I watching did. that play, just as I was, and so was everyone else in the stadium. Well, it's no secret. That's why they have him return punts. He has the capability to take him back, and he did so there. So after surrendering the punt return for a score, let's see what they can do in turn on this kickoff. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The New York set to take the field. Typically down in the first half, I might say, oh, you at least need a field goal out of this drive, but they're down to the point where they need a touchdown, don't they? Yeah, normally you know me. I mean, you've been around me for a while now, right? Unfortunately. I'm the, yeah, I'm sorry about that. But normally I'm the one pre uh, preaching patience. Yeah. You know, take your time, first half, you still got a chance. I think they're out of patience here. This has to be a drive that gets a touchdown. So if you're the play caller, you're going to that portion of the sheet that says big-time plays, special. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Miles Garrett able to take him down. It's a loss of three. Well, they were coming out of the 4-3 defensively. Pressure coming off that right side from the DM. And that's the blind side of most quarterbacks. If you're right-handed, that's the side you don't see quite as well. And that's why you rely on your left tackle, maybe your highest-paid offensive lineman, to take care of you. In this situation, that didn't happen. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he's going to be brought down short of the first at about the 31-yard line. Offense. And they will elect to decline the penalty. Everything turned out the way they wanted it to. No sense in even having to take that one. Hence the decline. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. 
And certainly not the greatest of kicks there. This one will be down inside their own 40-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And coming off a one-play drive that was so deflating for the defense, what, what's their mentality? How do they rally here and stop this offense? Well, hopefully there's some determination that sets in because I, they weren't ready to go on the last one. Give all the credit to the offensive guys for getting it done, but to allow a run of that length, that's just not being prepared. So now, are they determined? Are they ready to read their keys and make the proper plays? And we'll see how determined they are. The throw right side is complete here on the first play of the drive. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. A good pick up there for the Browns, 15 yards. One of the selling points of the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. Mayfield on first down. They throw caught right around the six. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Odell Beckham. Two catches, two touchdowns here so far. As his guys continue to put this one out of reach. Now he's having a nice little first half here, partner. And it's a first half that leaves us anticipating what can still come. I mean, two touchdowns already here through the second quarter. There could be plenty more before this game is over. Extra point by Seibert, up and good. And the route is on here in this first half. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays, the long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. Following the touchdown, here's Cyber now to kick it off. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The New York set to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the side and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from his trainer right now from all the work he's getting. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted. But it winds up falling incomplete. Charles, before the game, you and I were looking at the still undefeated teams in the league, and Detroit's technically won a 2 0 1. But let's look at the 3 0 teams the Bills, Patriots, Chiefs, Cowboys, Rams, 49ers, and Packers. I'm guessing if I ask you who would lose first, you might say Buffalo because they play New England this weekend. I think you're right about that because that's what you look at. Pressure from his right, and he goes down hard, flat on his back. Miles Garrett able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Boy, he came in off the edge so quickly there. Look out, because that's exactly what it was being shouted by the offensive lineman to his quarterback because he had no chance to block him. Here's Lachlan Edwards now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Now a fair catch signaled for and made right about the 43-yard line. Just 34 yards on the punt there, no return. And the Browns will take over, first and 10. Beckham and the Browns set to take over again. And his two touchdowns, a big reason they're winning right now. So meaningful when you score and it's got your team out there in front. Changes the complexion of everything you're doing. It's one thing to score a lot garbage time, doesn't it? But these count. This is a big deal, and he's making those types of plays. And I think they'll keep finding ways to get it to him. I was just going to say, probably going to go back to him. Weaving through traffic, and now he's free. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. Nick Chubb on his way to a monster game. Three first-half touchdowns as his guys continue to pour it on. 
So he's in for his third score of the game, and a defense probably saying, man, we, we don't want to see this guy for a long time. It's bad enough when anyone scores a touchdown against you, but for one person to get three, it almost sets him apart from the rest of the game, and no one likes to see any of those players on a pedestal, not from the defensive point of view. Here's Seibert now to add the extra point. And the route is on here in this first half. So they hit pay dirt on just one play. The long run, the scamper, and a very nice scamper into the end zone for the touchdown. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And New York set to take the field. And right now these guys, I mean, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them punting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. Okay, I got a quick tangent for us here, Charles. Let's look at the teams that have not yet won in the NFL, the 0-3 teams, the Jets, Dolphins, Bengals, Steelers, and Broncos. Who do you think is the first to get off the schneid? Well, when you look at it, who has the open week? Who's going to, who's safe? The Jets? The Jets, yeah, the they don't Jets. play anybody. Jets so they're not going to right? win this week. Right. I think the Bengals and Steelers, they play each other. Yep. So I think the Steelers beat the Bengals and get off the schneid. They're the team that I'm looking at closest and having the best opportunity to get it done. How about Denver hosting Jacksonville? A possibility there for the Broncos, right? Definitely a possibility, but I like the way that Jacksonville comes into this game. A big win on Thursday night at home against Tennessee and riding their hot rookie quarterback, Gardner Minshew, and their defense look ferocious again. Now Edwards to kick as he sends it away. Let's take it inside his own 40. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. A good return there, 17 yards. And the Browns have a short field in front of them now as they take over first and 10. Baker Mayfield leads the offense out for their next possession. Yeah, they have had success on the ground, really as a team, doing well carrying the football. So maybe a little less pressure on his shoulders as the quarterback. Any pressure he's carrying right now, that's self-inflicted, right? He's taking it on. He doesn't need to. Continue to do what you just said. Let everyone else carry the football. That's been effective. Don't have to worry about him throwing the ball in all the situations now. That's got to be a good feeling if he just relaxes and lets it keep coming to him. Yeah, and relax and enjoy the second quarter lead right now. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. We remind you that coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will be alongside. He'll have highlights and analysis from Orlando on this first half of... And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Odell Beckham on his way to a monster game. Three first-half touchdowns as his guys continue to put this one out of reach. So not only is that his third touchdown catch of the game, he's done it here in the first half. I'm not sure defensively what they're going to come up with to slow him down because already we're seeing him run past, over, through guys in order to make these catches. And being able to try... and shut him down at this stage of the game, it's going to take a lot of effort. So maybe it'll open things up for some other people. Well, they better figure something out, and soon. Extra point by Seibert, up and good. And a route is on here in this first half. Well, it wasn't a one-play drive, but I think they'll take it. The scoring summary, two plays and into the end zone. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. 
Robbie Anderson making his way back onto the field. A chance maybe here for them to get him more involved. They're down here on the scoreboard, and he's been very quiet. And the silence has been deafening for his team. They don't need that at all. They need fireworks. They need explosive plays. They need him touching the football in any way possible. Maybe go to some jet sweeps. Anything to get him going. Yeah, something to get him the ball. We'll see if they can do it. All right, we got a second here. Let's have some fun. Let's be cheesy, because why not? So we have the 71st Emmys on Sunday. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Miles Garrett able to disrupt yet another pass play. That is his third sack of the afternoon. have punted four times already and they're staring at a fifth barring a conversion here on third down they're going to try the jet sweep on third and long and that would cover beautifully their defenders stayed home and they'll stop him behind the line now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Lachlan Edwards now, standing just about on his own goal line. It's fielded at the 45. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And this offense, they're going to have excellent field position. They take over with a first and 10 on the short side of the field. A first down throw for Mayfield. Flushed out right. And bringing it in right side here, Beckham. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. Good yardage after the catch. Is that play good for 30 and a first? From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Every defense. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. A 15-yard touchdown grab as his guys continue to pour it on. I know a lot of people look at these games and think, all right, this thing's done. Let's have some sportsmanship. Let's not try and score. You should never do that in the NFL. I've seen big leads blown, and teams that looked like they had a victory, all of a sudden were going home with a loss. Cybert on for the PAT. And the route is on here in this first half. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. Following the touchdown, here's Cyber now to kick it off. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The New York set to take the field. You've got less than 30 seconds left here in the half. You're well on your own side of the field. What are we doing here, Coach Davis? Well, I'm trying something on first down. And it's something that's safe. It's something that's been done many times before. A lot of people say it's not even worth trying, but I'm running a draw. I'm running a screen. I'm seeing if something pops. And if it does, that can alter my strategy and potentially get me some points. And if it doesn't work, well, then you just run the clock out and go to the locker room. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Looking left side and completing it to Thomas. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now fall. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. Here's Lachlan Edwards now. 
as he's on to punt for New York. Oh, it's a wobbler here. So with one second left in the half, on is the field goal unit. It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. And this is no good. Close, but no cigar. You want the third quarter already? No problem. Let's do it. The Browns are going to get the second half kickoff, and they've got this lead as well as we are back and underway. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Odell Beckham now marching back onto the field. Oh, this defense, they wouldn't mind not seeing him again for a while. <laughs> Three trips to the end zone. How about that? I think right now they would happily go to their general manager and say, is there any way you could get a trade for him? Bring him over to our team so we don't have to cover him anymore because he is really having a heck of a ball game, isn't he? Boy, he is. I don't know that that mid-game trade is going to happen, but good thought. The offense back out there at the line ready for their next drive. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them. And I think he's going to go. They're not going to get him. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Nick Chubb, 75 yards as his guys continue to put this one out of reach. Not a whole lot to recap on that drive. Just one play, 75 yards to the house. Yeah, it's a long way to go. And remember, rarely is it a straight line 75 yards too. Got to have a little extra in there. So whatever the final number is, a well-deserved seat on the bench. A little oxygen if he wants it as well. Here's Seibert now to add the extra point. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. One of the shortest drives you'll ever see. One play, 75 yards, six points. Following the touchdown, here's Cyber now to kick it off. This will be taken short. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working, and more of that. Now a play fake here on first down. And a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. Charles, with that incompletion, I want to step back for a second, just talk about the quarterbacks this year. It's an interesting stat that you and I were looking at before the game. 40 quarterbacks have been used in the first three weeks of the NFL season, most in the Super Bowl era. Some injuries and then just some changes at QB. Yeah, 20 of the starting quarterbacks this past Sunday, under the age of 27. But what I like about what I'm seeing, despite the injuries, retirements, guys are being unable to play, I'm seeing these youngsters and backups come in and play well in a lot of cases. Gardner Minshew in Jacksonville has taken charge there. They got their first win. Kyle Allen, four touchdown pass for Carolina in relief of Cam Newton. They got their first win. Going into week three, the collective quarterback rating for the season, 94.0, which was the highest at that stage of the season in a long time in the NFL. So maybe the quarterbacking straights that we talk about all the time aren't as dire as we've made them out to be. Well, it hasn't been a whole lot of fun for Le'Veon Bell in this ball game, trying to find room to run the ball. I'm sure they're going to have to change some things up because he's so versatile. They've got to get the ball in his hand somehow and create some space because they're losing this game. Well, defensively, you got to key in on Bell, make him the focal point to stop him, and they've been able to do that. And he has gotten better every year he's been in the league, always adding something to his game, one of the premier runners in the NFL. 
Odell Beckham now marching back onto the field. So far, he has the trio of touchdowns. Obviously, it's been a pretty good game for him. So if this were hockey, they'd be throwing their hats out on the ice for the hat trick, right? I'm not sure exactly what you do in the NFL, except hey, applaud hey. and continue to hope you see a little bit more of this. What a tremendous game. You want to start a new tradition? What can we throw on the field? I don't know. We'll throw your mic out there. <laughs> a lot of fans would like that. Cut his mic off. Three touchdowns so far. A good start to the drive. Here's that's caught out on the left side. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. The end result, 21 yards. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Nick Chubb, 59 yards. As his guys continue to pour it on. Now you talk about the dominating rushing performances that you and I have seen together. This has got to be right up there. His fourth touchdown run of the game and another long one to boot. And I don't need to ask for a witness because you're right here with me. We are watching this, and we're watching such a performance that it's demoralizing for anyone on defense. You know, it starts out, coaches screaming, tackle him, get him. And after that last touchdown, I bet it's pure silence on that side of the ball. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. It's a short kick, taken at the 15. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. They have been struggling. I would imagine at halftime they went through some possible changes. Well, those changes aren't working, so now where do you go? I think that now it's much more in their head. And what I mean by that is just what you said. You've gone over the changes. I bet they were pretty clinical at the half, not too emotional. They might need to go to the emotional side because you've got to find something, some spark somewhere. And so far, just being calm hasn't exactly worked. They need any spark at this point. Bell, and they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. They'll go again with Bell. He's got a first down and then some at midfield. And he'll take this down to the 40-yard line. 22 yards there, a first down. Bell, of course, three-time 1,000-yard rusher. Sat out 2018, but you look back to 2017, a tick under 1,300 yards and almost 700 more receiving. They try and run on first down, but to no avail. Tackle for a two-yard loss in the backfield. Another example of just a dominant performance by this defense. Yeah, you hear all the time about teams that try to steal signals from the other side and try and learn their signs and their tendencies. It's almost like they get the answers to the exam the night before and were well prepared for this final. Travis Carey there to make the tackle. To throw on third down. Oh. Ball oh, had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did some... Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. It's picked up. A live ball here, remember. Well, that field goal block pretty much sums up the day for them, doesn't it? Boy, it really does. What's the word we often use? Symptomatic. It's just, it's just been a sign of how this one's gone. Give a lot of credit to the guys who got in and blocked the kick. They've had the advantage all game, and they continue to press it. 
heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. The last time out, another touchdown. I think there may be some empty seats around here by the time the fourth quarter comes around. Yeah, I have to agree with you because this one's just about decided. But you know who benefits from all those empty seats? Hey. You and me trying to get to the airport. That's the roads true. will be fairly that, clear that is by the one time positive. we have to leave the booth. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. And he'll get this down to the 39-yard line. First play of the drive going for 14 and also going for a first down. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? It's Landry now on the end of round. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. You know how we get focused at end of the half and end of the game situations about how much time's on the board and, you know, what you need to do? Sometimes you don't even have to worry about that. That's just smart football. You know, that kind of a lead, staying in bounds, it burns clock, even in a situation that we're not really focused on it. On third down, it's Nick Chubb. Oh, Chubb fumbled it. And now they're in the hurry up. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And they'll take it into the end zone for Brown's touchdown. Taking it in from the 20 as his guys continue to put this one out of reach. Well, partner, that was another explosive run. And one thing I've learned in our time in this game, yes, the offensive line has to get a lot of credit. But for big runs to occur, the wide receivers have to block well downfield. And then you have to have a good guy carrying the ball too, right? Oh, without a doubt. You need that difference maker lugging the rock. Extra point by Seibert, up and good. And the lead will swell by one more. The drive summary that time, five plays. And Nick Chubb, the one to finish it off, as he does so with a touchdown run. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. This will be taken very short. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Now the Jets offense gets ready to head back on the field. They've got to dig down deep. I mean, they need something right now, really anything to cling on to. This offense has struggled. Partner, join me in a walk to their locker room at the half, okay? Because I think what we would have seen is an offensive coordinator and his, and his assistant coaches getting together with all their positions, then coming together as a group, going over adjustments, and then the head coach coming in and just screaming, <laughs> wake up. Yeah. Let's get moving, guys. I'm kind of glad we weren't in there at that time, actually. <laughs> I mean, you think you might have turned it on us, too? Yeah, but right now, whatever was said hasn't been working. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Demarius Randall that time there to knock it free. With that incompletion, we step league-wide for a second. I want to discuss Saquon Barkley's injury. Obviously, that hurts the Giants, who are having a quarterback change. And Look, Daniel Jones looked good. But they're going to need Saquon Barkley in that backfield. In a big way. Not just as a runner, obviously, but his ability to catch the ball at the backfield, make plays in open space. Four to eight weeks with a high ankle sprain. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. The D tackle, Sheldon Richardson, came barreling in for the sack. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz. And even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, that allows your blitzers to get there. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Over the middle complete. It's Griffin. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. 
He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, the fact you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right Right there on the break, aren't they? Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and ten. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. Oh, he breaks a tackle and he's got an alley. And he'll take it into the end zone for Brown's touchdown. On Al Beckham. 69 yards as his guys continue to pour it on. The electric OBJ, the short reception, and then he did the rest of the work himself. You know, there's a thing that the players always talk about, the coaches in the league, they call it play speed. Because, you know, we have that time speed when we're running the 40s at the combine and, you know, at pro days and all of that. But play speed is different. And OBJ's play speed is some of the best in the league. In other words, when he has the ball in his hands or he's running a route, he runs it just a little bit harder than most people. And oftentimes, you come up wrong on your angles trying to tackle him. Cybert on for the PAT. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. The quick strike ability certainly intact there. Two plays, 80 yards to score it. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. This will be taken short. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Here's the Jet offense now. They head out to take over. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly, because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, where it's a pass-first league, that is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. A big hitter there. A first down gain of 26 yards. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. On first down, it's full. And he's going to be swallowed up. Sacked back at the 45-yard line. Miles Garrett, who else? He's in there for his fourth sack of the afternoon. job becomes twice as difficult now after the sack it's second and 20 to throw fall man open left side is brown eight yards on the completion but now they face third down it's not quibble about the game there on second down that was a positive play because that was a take what you can guess situation got out to the tight end now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down on third down, fall. And that will be incomplete. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, 
they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail 7 out of 10 times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. I feel like you and I could be in our backyard with our dads right now. What did they always say when they were throwing us a ball? Look it all the way in. Make sure you secure it. That had the feeling of not happening. Trying to get it to Thomas, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Denzel Ward. 20, 10. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Browns' defense has a touchdown. That's the story of the game. They've been suffocating all game long on defense. They were suffocating there again in a big way. And they've done it not just by out-athleting them, which is often the case, but by being able to adjust to anything they tried to throw at them and beating them into the punch each and every time. This was a defense that was well-prepared. Here's Seibert now to add the extra point. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Jets' offense now works their way back onto the field. And let's face it, this drive is not going to have any bearing on this game, but it's kind of important for one reason, isn't it? It certainly is. you got to get points. And okay, all right, I'm being facetious here. But you get points, you feel a little bit better about yourself as you move on to the next one. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Got to give some credit there defensively. They snuffed out that screen early on first down. Really read it well, didn't they? Because they didn't bring the pressure that they expected. They covered all the passing lanes. So once you see a breakdown as the passer, I think in this situation, you're throwing it at the feet of your back to make sure no one picks it off, or you throw it away. Throw it over the sideline. Don't try and freelance and try and make a bigger play. There's really no one else running a pattern that should be open. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Looking to go back to Thomas again, and it's third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now a draw play. This is Bell. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. Hate to say it, but that play typifies what we've seen from this offense all game long. Yeah, don't you think maybe you flip over your play sheet as the offensive coordinator and see the side that says try something different? <laughs> you know, because this has not worked all game long. They continue to try and get it done. They've got to come up with something a little bit different. Try something special, something they haven't seen. Anything to score a point. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And that will come the offense as they take over. Here now, time to discuss Odell Beckham Jr. What a game for him, Charles. Four touchdowns. Heck, for a lot of guys, that's a good season number. <laughs> You're exactly right. And let's face it, we have to stand up and applaud this one, even though we're supposed to be neutral, because this doesn't just happen by accident. This isn't four times where the defense just falls down or breaks coverage. He's worked awfully hard, changing routes, changing areas, changing angles, and getting open for touchdowns. We knew he'd be part of the game plan in a big way, and it has been in a very big way. And he's got a first down and then some at midfield. And he's finally down at the 21-yard line. A big play that time for Cleveland. Give him 42 yards on the ground. So they dig a little deeper in the playbook there. Get the wide receiver the ball running it, and it proves fruitful. Love the call. When you've got a guy who has running back skills, you want him to touch the ball as well, not just out wide where you throw it to him. Make sure you hand it to him or toss it to him and let him go to work.
So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Chubb on the counter. And an alley to run. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. A 21-yard touchdown run as his guys continue to put this one out of reach. And they drew up the counter there. It worked. They're glad they drew up the counter. And a lot of times what you're trying to do is just simply get the defense moving in one direction. It doesn't take much. Even one step's enough. Get them going in one direction and then cut back against the grain and let your running back finish it off and get the work done. Cybert on for the PAT. Now this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. One play, two plays, touchdown. That's all it took there. A very short and sweet drive that got him in the end zone. the touchdown. Here's Seibert now to kick it off. Now the Jets offense. They get ready to head back onto the field. And still no points on the scoreboard. You're coming off of the three and out. They're just looking for anything to grab onto right now, aren't they? I'm wondering if someone's going to take charge in the huddle. You know, we always look at look to the quarterback, but sometimes it's another player on the team, a star, a veteran, someone with some excitement and energy. It's like, all right, guys, let's shake things up and let's go because they still have an opportunity to make things happen. Shake it off. Falk now, a first down throw. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Sheldon Richardson picks up his second sack of the afternoon. to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. 53 is the mic. 53. Here's Falk. And the pressure gets to him again. Olivier Vernon coming in with some force for the sack that time. But this is what happens when you get behind the chains, as people like to say, when you have obvious passing situations, hard to vary it up and fool the defense. And you hate those situations if you're an O-lineman, right? Oh, without a doubt, because you just know they're coming, and you never know exactly how. They can be exotic in their blitzes, or their athletic ability just takes over. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. And it's coming it's Falk out of the gun. And this is going to be incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. The punt team on now is from their end zone. They get it away. Taking a couple yards shy of midfield. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. Good blocking there. Nearly
Young, and as it is, it'll go as a 19-yard return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Beckham and the Browns set to take over again. Seems like the measuring stick for a receiver for a great game is 100 yards. Well, he's well past that now. And as we analyze how he's getting him, that's where it really becomes fun because, let's face it, they keep sending coverage at him, keep trying to put the pressure on, yet he finds ways downfield and finds openings. That's a really crafty receiver. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. That's good for a Cleveland first down and 11-yard pickup. A first carry now for Kareem Hunt, and he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. Defense. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration. Not a good play. This is Hunt. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. A nice pickup of six there to get him closer to the end zone, and it'll be second and goal. They'll try to run with Hunt. And he's in. Touchdown, Browns. Punching it in from a yard away as his guys continue to pour it on. And nothing special there. They show they were going to run the football. They ran it. They got it in. Like old-time football, right? Hey, this is exactly what we're going to do. Straight-ahead power, and they got it done. Extra point by Seibert. Up and good. And that will extend this big lead. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And Kareem Hunt, the one to finish it off, as he did so with a touchdown run. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And now out come the Jets. And three and out on the last drive. No points on the scoreboard. A little soul searching now. I would say so, and they need to help out their defense a little bit. They've had to be on the field a lot more than normal, put them in some tough spots, but what's the old adage? When you get another chance, it gives you a better chance to do it right. It'll wind up being a loss of two, and it'll be second and 12. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. And he is out of bounds right around the 34. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. Fall. And there's another. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Mac Wilson with a big time sack on third down. It's a loss of seven. Well, they only had a yard to go. They try to pass the football. Defense blitz. Defense got there. Yeah, I think on this one, this is probably good scouting. Understanding a few tendencies and figuring out that, hey, they may take a shot. They dialed up the pressure and got to him. Here's Lachlan Edwards now as he's on to punt for New York. And here's a very low line drive. Almost whiffed on it. And that one didn't accomplish a whole lot. It'll be down inside the 35-yard line. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. With this lead and the football, things obviously looking good, but maybe... Yeah, you've taught me this before. Maybe this is where the defense is hoping that the offense helps them preserve that shutout that they've got going. And it has to be in the minds of the offense that they know how rare it is to get a shutout. So take care of them. Protect them. Take care of the ball. Move it downfield. Run the clock down. You don't want your defense to have to go on the field again the rest of the game. Reward them. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. Now Hunt. And he'll fight his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. 
They stay on the ground. Again, it's Hunt. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. Nice execution there. Good job by the O-line getting him in for the second time. And you always have to start with credit there when you're having a big game. I mean, you don't get there by yourself. That's rare. But how about the ability to see the proper holes, pick the proper place to go, and find his way into the end zone? Here's Seibert now to add the extra point. Now this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. Well, that drive started with not a whole lot of real estate in front of them. In plus territory, excellent field position. Two plays later, Pater following the touchdown. Here's Seibert now to kick it off. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the inline. The New York set to take the field. And last drive, three and out. Still a goose egg on the scoreboard. How do they break that goose egg? They've got to find a way to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers, get them some space, and try and make a first down and get some momentum going. It's been a struggle for them throughout the game, and that three and out on the last Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Sheldon Richardson getting him once again his third sack of the afternoon. Well, they don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Another try after the first down sack. Oh, oh the rookie nearly had the pick. Probably should have had it. Third down now. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now here's Paul. And that is incomplete. And we are inside of two minutes left in this lopsided affair. So it's Jets football as we get you reset here. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. On first down, Hilliard. And if there was a lane there, it closed up quickly as he stopped for no gain. Second down. And now a first chance for the backup here to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. Jarvis Landry, and he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. This thing is ugly. And sometimes those slants, they can be so tough to defend after the catch. It, it, it just happens so quickly. And really, it will get set up there is how quickly everything happens. Ball's out of the hands of the passer in a hurry, and he just takes it and goes. And he went all the way into the end zone. Cybert on for the PAT. Now this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays, the long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. Following the touchdown, here's Cybert now to kick it off. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The New York set to take the field. They are just obviously getting shellacked here in this one, Charles. What's, what's the message if you're a coach for this final drive in a lopsided game like this? For a lot of coaches, be honest. <laughs> don't forget today. Don't forget what has happened out here. Yeah, use that as ammo exactly. going forward. Exactly. Take a great look at that scoreboard. Realize how poorly everything went for us today. Coaching, playing, the whole deal. And never forget it because... You're not going to want that feeling no, again. No, you don't want that feeling again. And who knows? You may meet up with this team again. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. The first play of the drive there is incomplete. Demarius Thomas, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. 
Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Play action. It's full. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Demarius Thomas, the intended receiver, and it'll bring up third down. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. From the shotgun, here's Paul. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Miles Garrett, my goodness, make that now five sacks for him in this ball game. Really, really turning in an incredible performance. Here's Lachlan Edwards now as he's on to punt for New York. And now a low liner. I think he mishit it. And not his best effort there as this one's going to be spotted down just outside of the 40-yard line. On first down, they'll run with Hunt. He's got the first down here inside the 30. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. So a little icing on the cake there before the clock gets all zeros. What a way to finish things off. Exactly what you want. Not much time and a touchdown to put things away. Here's Cybert now to add the extra point. Now this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. Well, I'm not sure if they drew that play up to score, but it scored indeed. One play on the ground and into the end zone for six. Following the touchdown, here's Cyber now to kick it off. Very short kick. This will be taken by one of the up men. And they're going to wind up with pretty good starting field position as they get it up past the 35. Good starting position for the Jets as they come up first and 10. Falk looks to throw. And this will be incomplete. One second left to go. Looking to go back to Thomas again. And it's second down. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. One final shot. They'll look to throw. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Morgan Burnett, and his guys are going to get the football at the 28-yard line. So Cleveland able to come away with the victory here. And I tell you what, Charles, this might be about as good as it gets. They were incredible. Yeah, offense was in fine form. The defense threw the shutout at them. I think they worked in concert together. What I like about the offense is they held the ball pretty well. You know, time of possession, exactly what they were looking for in this one. And that helped out their defense. Didn't have to be out there the entire time. So when you do that and you're out there fresh playing, off a little extra spring in your step, and it showed up in this one. They had a ton of spring in their step. Impressive victory. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. It's a win for the Browns, and they're happy in the dog pound as we say so long from Cleveland.